first psalmist, even 538. We'll see verses 1, 2, and 4 of this song. It's good to see you all this evening. Let's sing. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. 539 will be our next song, Higher Ground. We'll sing verses 1 and 4 of this song. <coughs> I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I onward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground, Lord lift me up and let me stand. Oh 
chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 let the word of Christ dwell in you richly well in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord and whatever you do in the word of deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him Me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for watching over us. We thank you for our many blessings, God, that we are not even able to count. We're so thankful, God, for another opportunity that we get to come here and get to sing songs to you and get to hear another great portion of your word. I pray that you please be with, with us this evening. I pray that the lesson that is brought to us, I pray that we can all understand it and that we can bring it out to the world so others might know you and will come to you. I pray, God, that you just watch over us throughout this rest of this upcoming week. I pray that you keep us safe. Uh, I pray that you watch over us with the storms of Satan that are coming through. Just keep us safe, God. And I pray that in all things that we do, we give glory to you and everything that's in your will. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Next song will be number 678. 678. More about Jesus. <clears throat> I'm going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4 of this song. I sing. More about Jesus would I know.
darkness comes in like a flood. The battle belongs to the Lord. He's raised up a standard, the power of His blood. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory. Good evening to everybody. I hope you had a good afternoon and accomplished what you set out to do. If it was nothing more than a Sunday afternoon nap, I hope you had a good one. But don't take another one right now, okay? How many times in your life have you heard the song leader say these three words? Let us sing. I believe, uh, Anthony, your phrase is always, let us all sing. And that's, that's good, too. You know, the Bible talks a whole lot more about singing than we do as Christians. A whole lot more. Both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now, we're known for talking about why we don't use instrumental music. We've got that down pretty good. But... Beyond that, we don't talk a lot more about what the Bible says when it comes to singing. We all know that singing is a part of worship. And sometimes uh, people just don't give it the importance that God does. Uh, maybe you have thought before, that's just the way they take up another portion of the hour that we're together, you know. Just, just add some more songs. But it's not an insignificant part of our worship. To God, it's, it's very uh, important. And it, it's not something that we, we do uh, just because we want uh, to stretch the service or fill in the space. It's something that we do because it's important to God. And I hope it's important to you. And, and hopefully this lesson tonight will again stress the importance of, of doing this very thing uh, that God thinks is, is very uh, important. Have you ever thought maybe while you were in a worship service, you know, singing is mostly for people who have a good voice. And I don't have a good voice, so, you know, I'm not going to sing. Or if I do sing, you're not going to hear me. Uh, a lot of people feel that way, but I hope to uh, change your mind about that e even this evening. Some good things are going to happen when you sing to God. Some good things. I want to mention three of them to you. First of all, when you sing to God, you will be obeying and pleasing Him. You know, um, singing is not just a suggestion in the Bible. It's a command. It's something that God has asked for and, and expected uh, of, of the Christians. If you take your Bible and turn over to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19, when, when Paul were talk, was talking to those Christians at the church in Ephesus, he said, Speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and, and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And, and then that scripture that was read so well just a moment ago over there in Colossians chapter 3 and, and verse 16. Uh, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. It doesn't say through sermons. It doesn't say through Bible school, even though that's part of what we do. 
teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And so God wants us to sing. He commands us to sing. When we obey God, whether it's a subject of singing or whatever the subject may be, when we obey God, it certainly is an expression of our love for Him. You might remember that our Lord one time said, If you love me, you will keep my word. John 14 and verse 23. And that is so true. When God asks us to do something and we obey Him, we're saying in essence, I love you. As we carry out that command. Now again, hear me when I suggest to you this evening that the acceptability of our singing is not based on our ability. But it's rather accepted based on our effort. You remember that your Bible teaches you that, that God doesn't look on the outside as much as He looks on the inside of man. And you may not have that beautiful voice that someone else has, but that's not an excuse not to sing. All voices are different, and yet God calls upon all His children to sing to Him. He'll know if you are singing from your heart. No matter what it may sound like when it comes out of your mouth, He'll know if your heart's into it. And that's what's really important uh, to Him. You know when you obey God and, and sing to Him, you're going to be in good company. You remember a time when Jesus sang a song? And He sung it with His apostles? It's not something we talk about very much, but it was... Right before he died, really, as they left the upper room and were going to go to the Garden of Gethsemane, he sang a song with his apostles before he went to the Garden. And, and that's in Matthew 26 and verse 30. And so we'll be in good company when we sing to God. His son did. And the apostles of his son also did. The whole early church sung to God. Uh, as these passages in Ephesians and Colossians point that out, uh, even if you closed your Bible and started reading uh, Roman history or Jewish history, you would find writings that indicated that there were a group of people who wore the name of Christ. And, and in their worship, they lifted up their hearts and their voices to God in song. But when we do that today, we're going to be just as pleasing to God because it's an act of obedience. And God likes obedience. But another thing that's going to happen when you sing, you're going to be teaching people and encouraging people that are around you. Singing is not a selfish endeavor in worship. It, it's a community thing. I sing not only for my own self, but I sing for you. And hopefully you sing for, for me. You see, one purpose of our worship assemblies is to uh, stimulate one another, as the Hebrew writer says in Hebrews 10, 24, to stimulate one another to more love and more good works. That's why we get together, he says, and, and he, he begs, don't forsake that assembling together because you're getting together for the good of each other. And this purpose, this stimulating one another to love and good works, it's partially fulfilled in our singing. It's also fulfilled in our praying, in our giving together, in our studying the Word together. But let's not leave out this element of teaching and admonishing when it comes to the act of singing. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That's what he said. Speak to each other. Teaching and admonishing one another. One another. With, with the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. That's why Paul, when he's saying some things about worship in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, one of the things he points out in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 15 is that we need to sing not only with the Spirit, but we need to sing with the understanding. Have you ever thought about why that is important? If I sung in a way that you could not understand me, then it would be hard for me to teach you anything. 
through song. It would be hard for me to admonish you and encourage you and stimulate you to love and good works if you couldn't even understand the words that, that I was using. And so he talks about edification in 1 Corinthians 14 in verse 26. Let all things be done for the building up, for the edification of each other. When you sing, think about the people that are sitting around you. Do you, do you ever do that? Do you ever ask yourself, what are they hearing from my mouth? What am I doing? Am I encouraging? Am I teaching? Am I admonishing through the words that I sing out loud? Some people, again, uh, don't think singing is that important in worship when you compare it to the Lord's Supper or to preaching, but it is important because we are built up as we speak these words in song to each other. Barry Cunningham, and I don't know Barry, he was a preacher, and he wrote this years ago in, the, in a little paper called uh, The Evangelist, uh, The World Evangelist, as a matter of fact. And he, he asked the question in this little article, he said, how important is singing? And here's what he said. He said, I would consider the song, Standing on the Promises, you, you know that song, to be about average in length. It has about 50 words per verse. If you sing three verses that total, uh, that, that's 150 words. If you attend just three scheduled services of the church every week, you will sing about 12 songs in a week. 12 songs per week equals 1,800 words. If you go to church faithfully for one year, that totals 93,600 words at 12 songs per week for 52 weeks. But wait, there's more. If you take your children to church faithfully, the first 18 years of your life, your child will hear 1,784,800 words on behalf of Jesus just in the song service alone. If you attend the services faithfully for 50 years, you will hear 4,680,000 words just in the song service to motivate you to live the Christian life. Now, who said he, he suggests singing isn't important? I've never noticed how many words are in a song. I've never even thought about how many words I sing in a week or in a year or in 25 or 50 years. We normally just don't think about that too much. But there's so much good that comes from singing the words of songs, words about Jesus, words about the Father, words about the Holy Spirit, words about the church, words about uh, Christian living and, and holiness and, and our salvation and God's grace and God's mercy and God's love. Just countless lessons, countless lessons that we share with each other through the words of song. Well, let me tell you about that third thing that's going to happen when you sing. You will be giving praise to God. And I think this is probably the whole purpose behind the command. God wants us to praise Him. It's, it's first and foremost directed to God. Now, our neighbors are going to benefit from what we sing. We're going to benefit from it. But first and foremost, our singing is another way that we express our praise to God. Remember what those verses said? Sing and make melody in your heart to the Lord. The other one in, in Colossians, sing with grace in your hearts unto God. And then the verse that followed in Ephesians and the one that followed in Colossians, giving thanks to God. That's what we're doing when we're singing. I think David said it well over there in Psalm chapter 96 when he reminded us that God is so deserving of our singing. Psalm 96, beginning in verse 1. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. 
Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless His name. Proclaim the good news of His salvation from day to day. Declare His glory among the nations, His wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. The book of Psalms is, is one of the favorite readings of the Bible. Always has been. And this is a collection of songs is what it is. And how important it is to make sure that we understand that we need to praise God. And that we need to express our appreciation for what He's done in our life and what He's doing now and what He will do in the future. He's so deserving of our praise. And to the Christian, the giving of praise, it comes as natural as breathing. I mean, we understand what's been done for us, and we appreciate it. Uh, there's a song that we sing sometimes that has the words, There's within my heart a melody. And there ought to be. There ought to be in the heart of every Christian constantly a song of thanksgiving, appreciation, and praise uh, for God. James says in James 5 and 13, he said, Are any of you cheerful? Then, then let him sing. Let him sing. And that's a good way to express the cheerfulness of our heart in relationship to praise to God. I heard about a, an old man that went to a small congregation, and he loved to sing. And every Sunday, man, everybody in the church building heard him sing. And he would just bellow it out. And he would just overpower everybody else's voice. He'd just rear back and sing. And the problem was he couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. And people, you know, they'd look at each other and they'd look at him. He, he didn't care. He just kept doing it. And they'd look at each other. And, and there was a couple of men that got together one time and said, somebody needs to talk to him. He said, he's just, he's just messing up our service. And one said, why don't you go talk to him? The other one said, why don't you go talk to him? And, and finally, two more men got in on the conversation, and they decided they all four would go talk to him. They knew where he lived. He was a farmer, and they went out to his farm after a Sunday. It was on Monday. They went out there, and they went out there, and he was plowing in the field. And they thought, well, we're going to have to walk out in that dirty old field and talk to him. So they, in their good shoes, went out there, and uh, they asked the man to stop his plowing and said, uh, said brother, we want to we want to talk to you about something. We, we don't want to hurt your feelings. No offense intended, but you've got you've to get a grip on this singing in church. You've got to calm down a little bit. He said, said, you're embarrassing us, and people are talking about you. And he said, well, I'm sorry. He, he said, I, I'm sorry. But you know, when I look at these old clothes that I wear, and I think about the robes of white that God has reserved for me in heaven, I can't help but sing. I mean, really sing. And when I see that old shack over there that I live in, knowing it could fall down any day, I think about that beautiful palace that God has for me, and I can't help but to sing to the top of my lungs. He said, you see this old hat I got on? He said, nobody else would have it. But I look at it every day, and when I look at this old hat, I think about the crown that God has waiting for me and all those that love Him. I can't, I can't help but sing. Well, all four men felt like they had come to do the wrong thing before they left. And they said, we, we, under, we understand, and they left. And as they were coming back to town, the conversation continued in the car. And one man said, to break the silence, he said, You know, John's singing isn't that bad. And another joined in and said, You know, I never realized how sweet his voice really was. He is sincere. And the other guy said, Well, I just hope that God will let me sing with him when we all get there. Another guy said, let's never say another word to him again, unless it be a word of encouragement. Giving praise to God comes from the heart. And when you look into the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, 
there's references to singing around the throne of God. Chapter 5, chapter 14, chapter 15. You know, I tell folks sometimes, if you, if you don't like to sing here, you're probably not going to like heaven. I just got a feeling that's going to be a pretty common occurrence in heaven around the throne of God. And so this is an avenue. This is an avenue to, to give your heartfelt praise to God. Don't let anybody take that away from you. You let God know of your appreciation. In Psalm 111 and verse 1, David said, Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. And, and I hope silently you're thinking, Amen. Count me in too, David. I, I, I want to do the same thing. Knowing that when I do so, I obey Him. And I teach and encourage other people. And I give Him the praise that He deserves. And so tonight I wanted to tell you how important singing is. And how you need to continue to lift up your hearts and to lift up your voices to the one who has abundantly, abundantly blessed you. And do that until he comes for you. If you're not a Christian this hour, would you reconsider? Living without Christ is no life at all. You'll never find the happiness. You'll never have the cheerfulness that you can have knowing that God is your God. How important it is to believe in the Son of God who came to die for your sins. How important it is to confess that you believe that Christ is your given Savior. How important it is to believe that repentance is necessary, turning away from your sin and turning to God. How important it is to be baptized into Christ and to rise in newness of life, refreshed in life, having something to sing about the rest of your life. You can be a Christian even tonight before we leave if you're not. Those of us who are Christians, may we continue to spread the good news. May we continue to spread the good news not only in our influences and in our everyday behavior, but through this word, but also through the words of the song that we sing in front of other people. Christ is our Savior. He's our Lord. There is some rejoicing that comes with that commitment that we have with Him. If you are subject to the invitation tonight and you need us to help you in your spiritual walk, will you come as together we stand and sing?
make that known by coming down as we sing the first verse, number 354. Sing one verse, 354. If you need to take that, come down. You'll be served. Let's sing. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou mightst ransom me. As Christians, as a reminder of the body of Christ that He hang upon the cross for each and every one of us. We ask you to be with these and take this. They can do so in a manner that is pleasing to you. In Christ's precious name. Amen. us as Christian is a reminder of the blood that was shed there upon the cross for each and every one of us. Be with these protect this, they can do so in a manner pleasing unto you. In Christ's precious name. Amen. you continue to guide our, our lives 
As we separate, we'd ask that you would go with each of us, carry us safely to our homes. Again, we pray for those of our number that are, that are sick and not able to be with us. We ask that you be with them and fill the needs that they have. We have also those that are traveling. We ask that you be with them and keep them safe as they travel. In Christ's precious name, amen.